17 days to go until Election Day, and the rhetoric, oh boy, it's heating up. If you've been watching it across the country, former President Clinton will be in Kentucky Tuesday to campaign for the third time with Senate candidate Allison Lundergan Grimes. He's in Arkansas this weekend. Democrats bringing out the star power to try and shake off what's been dubbed the six year itch by political watchers. Since World War II, the party in the White House has lost an average of 26 House seats and six seats in the Senate. The First Lady is also hitting the trail. She is spending the weekend in Florida campaigning for gubernatorial candidate Charlie Crist. And the president himself is expected back on the stump tomorrow in Maryland and Illinois campaigning for gubernatorial candidates there. Part of a limited campaign itinerary for the president as he is slumping in the polls. With me now from Washington is Shira Center, politics editor for Roll Call. All right, Shira, uh, we got 17 days to go. We're talking about this six-year itch. We, we provided some of the past statistics, the average what are you seeing at this point as we really only have two weeks to go? Right, you, you did put the average up, and I do think we'll probably have an above average uh, loss for Democrats in terms of Senate races, and I think we'll have a way below average loss for Democrats in terms of House races. Is that because of the president? Uh, that's because of the president a little bit, but it's also because of the map, right? You're dealing with a lot of Democratic senators in southern states where the president is hugely unpopular, right? It's just the nature of the cycle in the Senate class. And in the House, it's a, I think it's a, it's a result of redistricting and just the way some of these districts are drawn. So some of it, a lot of it's in the president control, but a lot of it isn't. Okay, so all the focus, though, and this is the point that some are making, all the focus is really on who's going to control the Senate. They're not bringing in, at least the Senate candidates, President Obama himself, but they are on the gubernatorial level. Democratic gubernatorial candidates, they want to bring in the president, but congressional candidates not. Right. I mean, it is an interesting phenomenon. And I should point out that congressional candidates uh, don't want to be seen with Obama, but they will happily take his money, right? They're the average teenager. They don't want to be seen with them, but they'll take their allowance. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, but no, it is interesting that he's going to a lot of the states, but look at a lot of the campaign for a lot of these governors, but look at the states where he's going, right? Or at least had scheduled visits. These are states that are usually in the blue column, okay? Uh, going back, perhaps going back to Illinois, to, that is his home state after all, yeah. but these are states where he's generally popular. He's not going to campaign for governor of Arkansas, for example, right? Well, you know, some of the, the parts uh, that I'm watching that, that are moving along is the money that you were just alluding to and, and the repositioning across the country based on the potential of a candidate to, to win or lose. What's some of the major money shifts that you've seen in this last week that could really impact the next 17 days as we're talking about media buys? Right. Right, we're talking about millions of millions of dollars spent on the airwaves, and there have been some really unique shifts in the last week. First of all, Senate Democrats uh, were not scheduled to go. Uh, excuse me, the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee—that's the arm of Senate, the campaign arm right. of Senate Democrats—they were not scheduled to continue airing in Kentucky, and they did not re-up there, so they are out of Kentucky. Uh, some people say that's basically them throwing in the towel on the race. But meanwhile, they have moved money to South Dakota, which is a sleeper of a race, and to Georgia, hmm. which could be competitive. Uh, and that is really where uh, Democrats now see their best pickup opportunity is in the state of Georgia. When are we baked in? When does an October surprise not matter at all? Are we already there or is it next week? I think next week is really the last time that an October surprise could have a huge effect. Uh, you know, you're talking about midterm elections, so turnout is going to be down in general all over the map. But remember, a lot of these states have started voting already. I mean, early voting starts in some places in early October. So some people have already voted. It is too late to change their minds. So I think right. that's really the next week. And in terms of advertising, too, usually you have to cancel two weeks out. So we're talking about Tuesday now. You know, Shira, as we move to the post midterms, if the Republicans do take over the Senate and the current administration has a huge lineup that it's trying to get confirmed, wouldn't they want to now push those lists forward to try to get them through? Through the lame duck session, yes, yeah. there is some speculation that uh, when Congress comes back, especially because they got out of here early last time, that there will be so much to do in this lame duck sec in this lame duck Surgeon session. General, for instance. Exactly. I mean, there's also a CR, a continuing funding resolution, a whole lot of stuff, and all these nominees. Obama could try to just push them all through, or Harry Reid, in that case, could try to push them all through before Republicans most likely take control of that chamber in January. We could have plenty to talk about over the next 17 days, and I'm guessing that we will, since you're calling Congress a bunch of teenagers, right? Shira Center, I'm just joking <laughs> with you. Of roll call, you have a good weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you.